things that are happening too. My sense is that there was some courtship behavior going on there. Well, we, we saw some courtship. We saw some of the males go out and kind of bite at the females' wings and stuff. Now, I did see some of that. And occasionally, there was some touching yeah. that was going on, the way they were swimming around. It was a lot more than just the cleaning at that cleaning station. No, it so. was a place for mans to get together. And I, I saw you swim off and follow them into the blue water a couple times. Look at the size of those things relative to the divers. So those things are 16 to 18 feet across. I mean, some are smaller, but I would say, uh, yeah. well, 14 to 16 yeah. feet anyway. One of the images that sticks out in my mind, Feo, is that manta ray coming over the cleaning station with its mouth open, it's just ah, like that. And you can see right down into all of its gill plates and its gill rakers, you can see the back of his throat. It's just amazing to see a big animal coming at you with its mouth open. And then it, it closes it up and goes on, and the next manta ray comes right in and does the same thing. And these little cleaner fish are going right in the manta ray and finding little parasites to clean. You know, we didn't see feeding happening here at the, at the cleaning station, but uh, when we took that uh, sidebar trip to see if we could find feeding, that was very different behavior. We got those nice manta ray feeding shots where they do the loop-de-loop. -loop. They actually drive all the little mycids up to the surface, and then they, they loop yeah. right in front of them and scoop them up. Absolutely. My sense was that, uh, you know, when they're doing that loop-de-loop, -loop, that um, they're, they're kind of optimizing a, an area where they're working, you know, and, and what, what a better way than if you're on a hot spot for feeding than just to keep looping around. I mean, that's, that would be the best way to do it, and they figured it out. They got it figured out, don't they? I, I think that they use their fins to kind of corral those little mycids, those little shrimp, and then they come through that congregation with their mandibles all open like this, and they scoop it up. And, and you can see the mycids in the water, so if you go hang out where the mices are, then the manta rays come right in and start doing their circle. Sperm whales, humpbacks, giant rays, just a few of the fascinating inhabitants of the ocean world. Magical places and fascinating creatures are reason enough for this ocean odyssey, but the sea offers more. There are spectacular events in nature. Some are well known, and may be sought out. Others, pure serendipity, being in the right place at the right time. Sometimes it is these surprises that offer the greatest opportunity. Remember we were in the southern end of Indonesia and one day we found this reef with this fairly vertical wall and the currents were upwelling that day and all these bait fish were massed here. Magic, just magic. Not far from Raja Ampat, another area of awesome beauty and diversity still thrives. On this day, upwelling currents have delivered a feast of plankton to these waters, bringing in dozens of varieties of schooling fish to feed. The water is filled with life, vibrant and shimmering in all directions. The display is breathtaking. Mobulas sweep in to share in the bounty.
Mobulas are rays so like the giant manta ray, it can be difficult to tell them apart. The mobula, however, is more reclusive than the giant manta. Soaring in and out of the schooling fish, they make an impression on all present. It looked to me like the mobulas were actually working the bait, but I don't ever remember seeing them actually get any of the bait. They must have been. That's, to me, a mystery, too. Obviously, the mobulas were right in the action with these bait fish when they were swarming around, and it seemed like when the mobulas came through that they were really clearing out. One shot, I recall, the mobula just came through the bait fish and it just opened up a big hole. And we spent a whole afternoon there. And then we went back the next day and the whole thing would change. <laughs> the bait were gone. That's another wonderful thing about the ocean. Always something different happening. To be there the first morning and then to have three hours of this exciting action where everything is in motion, a dozen different species of fish feeding. It must have been that water to create a good feeding situation, not only for the bait fish, but nutrients that were being upwelled here. Mm -hmm. Everything seemed to be feeding. The wonderful thing